All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the truest football YouTube channel on the market. I'm joined by Busher in the immediate after afterbirth of the uh, 2021 <laughs> AFL draft. Busher, we just sat through the 20, 20 picks there. I had a the few first drinks. Round, it was beautiful. I had a few beers on an empty stomach and I'm starting to sober up a little bit now. So starting <laughs> to take in what was uh, a very interesting 20 rounds, uh, 20, 20 picks so <laughs> it far. A, it was a spicy draft. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll go from the top and start because it got off to an uneventful start, didn't it? Horn Francis yeah. went to North Melbourne. That was the pick everyone expected. Um, yeah. Any particular thoughts on that? Lucky North Melbourne. They turned down some very good offers to keep him, so they highly rate him. It did say at one point, it said trade is in while North Melbourne were on the clock, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, holy shit, but it turned like, out to be. There was a part of me if it's like, please be free, oh, please tell me we've somehow gotten. Yeah, Juan Francis. Francis, that's right. Uh, the Bulldogs got Sam Darcy with pick two. Uh, yep. No real surprises there. Maybe it was a little bit earlier than people originally thought, but you did call it. I was it. the first one to call it. You were. You were the first person that I saw to call that Sam Darcy would actually go pick two to yep. the Western Bulldogs. GWS elected not to pick Dacos. Then they went on Finn Callahan as well for pick three. So yep. Dacos slides down to pick four after Gold Coast bid on him. So, so far, uh, pretty much, I think Toomey had it right up to this point. And that continues. I think he nailed the full ten, didn't he? Yeah, possibly. Um, Mac Andrew went pick five to the Gold Coast Suns, a player that's uh, with Jared Witt sort of waning at the end of his career, also yeah. just coming off an ACL, a player that could potentially play key position forward. So no real surprises there. Rochelle then joined Adelaide. Again, that was the expected pick. Yep. Um, so, so far, Toomey had this pretty much pegged. The Hawthorne pick was where I thought we might get a bit that's of a That's where everyone sort of went, yeah. That's right. So they went Ward. They were thinking about Johnson and Araz- uh, sorry Johnson and Hobbs, we yep. thought. Um, although, you know, Johnson ended up sliding a fair bit. Your boys went Jai Amos and BK. How did you feel about that at the time? At the time, I was... Because I had my Johnson and Erasmus in the two top ten theory. You had your Johnson what? <laughs> sorry, Out in the top ten. But okay. Because <laughs> like, like I did in the fandom draft, I kind of felt like there were other keys that I could get later, so yep. I took my Johnson and Erasmus, but... So at this point, you had your Johnson out of the... On the stream, absolutely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, now that we've taken Amis, I'm happy, like, I was happy to take him, obviously. He's, mm. We needed a key forward, he's a good key forward. Yeah. Uh, Richmond then took Gibkus, which was uh, not a surprise, but it was a bit more 50-50, this one, between yeah. he and Ben Hobbs. I think I thought it was going to be Ben Hobbs. And again, credit to Toomey, after a horror show last year where Will Phillips got taken a pick three and everything like, yeah. changed in the top ten after that. Um, so far, he's nine out of nine with Gibkus joining Richmond as the best available key position defender. Yep. Um, and that makes sense, we said at the time, yep. because they've got so many second rounders, they can get so many inside mids available, you'd think. Yeah. Pick ten... Fremantle had the choice of Johnson and Erasmus, and were you happy with Erasmus? Now I am, now that I've seen Johnson <laughs> slide to 21, obviously, but at the time I felt like Johnson more so than Erasmus, but I do agree Erasmus has more upside, and now that I've seen Johnson slide, it was the smart move to take the upside guy mm. when you had the chance. In hindsight, it's looking very good. At this point, uh, with West Coast very close, uh, uh, St Kilda had the choice of Johnson or Hobbs, and I was like, please take someone else, so we have the choice of both. Mm. Uh, they took Naziah Wanganin Miller, so a genuine outside type, which kind of contrasts what they already have there at St. Kilda yeah. with a lot of. They didn't need that type mid. of player, though, I think. Yeah, yeah. So out of the clubs that were looking for an outside mid, the St. Kilda sort of yeah. ticked that box, um, which was good. West Coast were on the board there, and this was the first trade of the night, or at least the first live trade of a pick that was on the yeah, board. A relevant pick, not a shuffling not of not picks a for bidding pick. or whatever. That's right. So uh, West Coast shuffled back two picks. For Port Adelaide, they basically swapped 12 and 14, and the Eagles got a future second. This made me a little nervous, because I was hoping for Matthew Johnson or Ben Hobbs. Um, but the, now that the dust has settled, I think the Eagles have done exceptionally they well in terms it. of that value of that trade. So basically, it's a two-pick downgrade for um, for a future second rounder for free, basically, yeah. on the basis that Port Adelaide were trying to get ahead of Essendon for Josh Sim. And that's who they eventually yeah. took. Even though it's Port Adelaide, it'll be a late second, but it's still... Yeah, that's true. It's still made out like faves. It, it's for free, and when you consider who we actually took it as yeah. well, it, we would have literally just taken that player at pick yeah, 12, yeah. you'd think. Uh, Essendon then took Ben Hobbs, the best available inside mid. Uh, no surprises there. It's a little bit later than people thought, but I think we yeah. said... I think I said 9 to 13 was his range, and he got Pete taken at 13. West Coast was then on the board, and I was like, Johnson, Johnson, not yep. Chesser, not Chesser. <laughs> and we ended up taking Chesser. I'm a... A little bit more relaxed about that considering how much Johnson has slid since then. Like he's still yeah. available as we go into the second It day. vindicates it for sure. That's right. So w- that trade is looking really good. I'm sure I will grow to enjoy Chesser. I'm really hoping that he's a midfielder and not a halfback flanker. He's a player that's missed a lot of football over the last couple of years. 
and has the skill set we're looking for with outside speed and class. So I'm hoping he's an outside mid, potentially another shoey. That's the best case scenario. Uh, worst case scenario, he's a running defender, but uh, we'll move past that. We'll see over over time if we were correct on that. The Giants picked Lee Galea. You called this? Yep, I bit. called it live on the stream. I did have a bit of help with a couple of people like, just chucking his name out there. I'm like, GWS need a key back. They took the mid Callahan with their last pick. It mm. made sense to me. It did make sense that they had taken the mid. So if they'd taken a Gibkiss at four, obviously this yeah. pick was more likely to be a midfielder. So they went Alik Alia, which was a bit of a reach. Um, I think Nightmare rated him really highly, but yeah. not so much anyone else. Uh, Brisbane went the halfback option in Darcy Wilmot with uh, Sin not available. That was who they were most yeah. strongly linked to. But uh, too good to, to fall that far. Richmond then surprised me. This surprised me because I thought Richmond would take a genuine midfielder after going Gibkiss. Or if, oh, yeah, they took Gibkiss earlier. Yeah. They took Gibkiss, yeah. and then uh, obviously that kind of ruled out of Van Roy, yeah. you'd think. Uh, but they went Tom Brown, a running defender from Vic, Vic Country, uh, from the Murray Bush Rangers specifically. Um, so, yeah, to overlook a genuine midfielder there, again, they're a team with picks in the 20s, so that, that kind yeah. of made sense, but it was a bit of a surprise. This was a genuine bolt. Oh, yeah. Angus Sheldrick joined the Sydney Swans with pick 18 as a genuine inside mid. People th- sort of thought that top of his range was maybe early 20s. Yeah. So for Sydney to pluck that talent, um, you know, you know, that, I think they've sort of earned our re- yeah. respect a little bit, Sydney. So They haven't fucked up many draft picks. Exactly. We thought it would be Van Royen, but Van Royen did go the next pick yeah. to Melbourne. Which was um, a surprise. Yes, with pick 19. Um, because they were in a position to pick best available. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's hard to argue that he wasn't. Um, but, yeah, wouldn't have thought a key back was a glaring need for them but yeah. maybe it's a longer-term thing. And probably actually the biggest bolter was Kai Lohman. Yeah, he um, wasn't even on my big board for the fantasy draft. No, I think I read... Uh, I think it was Nightmare's thread earlier, and he had him in the 20s or 30s, I think, which was still relatively yeah. high. I, I can't remember. Maybe it was in the 40s. But either way, Brisbane at pick 20, um, that was a big surprise. And yeah. probably the big notable omission from that top 20 was Johnson. So Fremont will have pick one tomorrow. Is that who you're hoping they take? God, yes. Considering here's the guy I was hoping we'd take with our first pick tonight. So mm. the fact we could take him on the second night. Imagining a scenario, I will be twerking most likely on stream tomorrow. Imagining a scenario where the, um, the Dockers end up with Johnson, Erasmus and Amos is just ludicrous. Shh. I wonder what the knock is on Johnson. What do you think it is? I'm guessing it's the similar, like we sort of said it a little bit. Well, we're saying it on air or off air, like the off kind air, of think, the yeah. vanilla thing, like the Devin Robertson, like a Josh Walpole, those sort of guys. Comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. Like those guys that kill their like under 18 year going into the draft, but they're just considered a little vanilla. Yeah. I think that's probably the similar diagnosis with Johnson, if you will. That's the only thing I can think because he's uh, had a pretty accomplished year and performed well for WA in rep footy as well. And so. he didn't even tank like the combine. He had like great agility mm. scores, all that sort of stuff. It is is wild to me as an Eagles fan that the Eagles would pick a, a guy in Chesser who's played six games over two years with uncertain midfield application. That we would overlook Johnson, who's performed strongly for WA in favour yeah. of Chessa. I'm not saying that I hate the move. It just baffled me. And it's going to take time yeah. to really sort of readjust that. But um, as an Eagles fan, I'm hoping with pick 29 and now a future second for free, I believe we're going to look to trade that 29 up. Yep. Whether or not it's enough to get Johnson from Fremantle, probably not. Mm. Probably not. I feel like Johnson... Who would, would you target him. barring a Johnson on a trade-up, you think? Like a Spazzo? Or so, a... so there's some good players left. That's that's yeah. what we should touch on as well. So um, I'd say Johnson, obviously the highest rated, yep. at least by Fox Footy's rankings, but I yep. think everyone really. Arlo Draper is a player that yep. I've grown to like. Um, Josh Goder. Josh Goder is the other I third like one. Goder. So, I, I wouldn't cry too much if we took Goder over Johnson, but I definitely want Johnson. Yeah, I bet you do. Um, <laughs> and then Jesse Motlop's another player that, yep. that could go in that early 20s. So it'll be interesting to see what we what we do yep. to move up in that order. I'd, I'd want to move two seconds for Johnson. Yeah. Um, but if we miss out on Johnson, whether or not I'd, I'd want to give 29 and a future second, that becomes a little steep. So maybe we could actually get someone a good good play with 29. I'd be interested to see if we could slide down a pick or two, then get maybe another one in the 20s to try and see if Johnson slides a couple more, then get him and possibly Motlop. But who's the pick after you, do you know? Uh, G-dubs, I think, have an early second. Uh, Hawthorne? No, we're probably, we're probably, oh, it might be Hawthorne, I think. Yeah, yeah Hawthorne have pick 23. No, there's somebody... With, yeah. No, it's Geelong. Yeah. Yep. No, that's not right either. Geelong traded for the 23. North. Not the Pies. It is North, I think. It is North. They have picked 20. Ah. So North Melbourne will Oh, yeah, because 19 be... was the Gold coast mm. yeah. It's a bit of a mystery who North would take. I don't know if they would take a Johnson, yeah. so to speak. 
Um, yeah, but anyway, yeah. there's not too much point speculating, but you could probably trade with, with you know, behind a North Melbourne, you'd probably be safe, I reckon. Yeah. So you could get some value out of that. But uh, it's all very interesting, and we're going to resume the trade, uh, sorry, the draft stream tomorrow at about yeah. quarter to four Perth time. That's quarter to seven Victoria time, but um, or Eastern States time. But thank you for joining us, guys, and let us know in the comments if you are happy with your club's pick, if they've picked, or uh, who's a player that you're hoping your team drafts tomorrow, so or tonight, whenever this video comes out. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you then. For the record, I was fucking chuffed. <laughs>